What's up YouTube? So have you ever wondered how to analyze flips, wholesale deals, rentals, on market, off market? If that's something you're interested in, this is the video for you. Um, so I'm gonna break down, you know, real numbers, real costs. Maybe some of you have watched some of these flipping TV shows and they talk about, I purchased this property for a hundred, I put a hundred into it, you know, sold it for 300, made a hundred thousand dollars. That's not right. There's all types of other fees associated with it holding costs, you know, utility costs, property taxes, insurance, all this stuff is gonna be prorated during the time that you're renovating. And especially if you're not using your own money, which a lot of flippers don't, I'm assuming most or all on these TV shows you watch do not use their own money because they do a multiple number of projects per month. You know, if you were gonna do one or two a year, you could use your money, but let's say you're doing two a month three a month, four a month, and they're all costing you $200,000 to buy, 100,000 to renovate. How many sets of 300,000 of your own money do you have that's not gonna impact your lifestyle and you just sitting there holding on money and not being able to spend and you know pay bills and all that. So you use other people's money, you pay them interest, you get in and out, you know, when the property sells, you pay them off or you make smaller monthly payments without the necessity of so much of your own cash down. Um, and then another thing too, like if you're looking just to buy rentals on the market, right? You don't know what wholesaling is. You don't know how to find properties off market. You have a great W-2, you're not looking to leave. You just want to take some of your active cash and turn it, you know, relatively um, passive. By the way, you know, owning rental properties, people say it's passive. It's not. Even if you have a management company, nobody's going to care about your property as much as you are. So you still have to manage the managers. And that kind of goes for any type of business, whatever, you know, company or role you're in. If you are a manager, you're still managing others and you still have work and different and higher responsibilities. So um, let's just get right into some of these calculators. And I'm going to start with... Uh, one that I use when I want to take properties down and flip them myself. Uh, and this calculator actually is um, from my buddy Tommy Har and Andy over at Realside, uh, located in Columbus. So um, thank you guys. This calculator is actually very, very awesome. I had one that was, you know, similar with the, the numbers and breakdowns. It just didn't look as pretty. And uh, this, this, this calculator is phenomenal. And um, also, if you're looking to get into a uh, real estate group. Um, I'm in a group with these guys. There's a whole bunch of other investors. Uh, you know, we're in a Slack channel where we talk about flipping, wholesaling, uh, rehab and managing contractors, private money, hard money. Um, you know, what's working nowadays in marketing, what's not working. So uh, if you're interested in joining a group of guys for, I mean, these guys are way undercharging for the value you get. Um, shoot me a message, drop a comment down below, and uh, I'd love to connect you guys so you can get on the path of, you know, financial freedom. Um, but anyway, so what this calculator starts spitting out first is you see, as you know, the purchase price, um, the estimated repair cost, your ARV, which stands for after repair value. You know, this is when you comp a property, which we're not going to get into. I've got other videos for that. But the way single family residences work is by comps, which means if the house to the left of me looks exactly the same as the house that I'm looking to buy, and if that's sold in tip top shape, let's say for 190, that means I know if I make my property look equal to that property because it's a ranch, you know, it's three bed like mine, two bath like mine. Um, two car garage like mine, I mean, you know, very similar, then that means I can also get 190 if that property just sold in today's market within like the last three to six months. So now I know, you know, the end goal. So that's where you start from. Like, okay, I know I can sell this for 190. Now we kind of work it backwards and deduct every single cost and that will let us know our profit at the end. Um, so, you know, you got your purchase price, we've got our rehab and we know what it's going to sell for. Um, and these actually, I don't know what these numbers are. I think this is from a recent flip it idea, but we'll go through some scenarios. I just want to explain, you know, line item by line item. Um, here you have your estimated hold dates. You know, how long are you going to hold this property for one month, two months, three months, four months? Um, the reason this matters is, is you're not using your own money. Every single day that you use somebody else's money costs you interest, which is called per diem, per day. So what this does is, you know, you factor in your closing costs. Typically for, you know, me, um, it's, I don't know, one and a half, two percent. 
Uh, maybe it's three for you. So again, you know, do your own due diligence, know what your costs are, but typically it's anywhere between three, two and 3%. <clears throat> and then here is where we have the lender information. Um, the first, you know, part was basically your acquisitions costs. And then uh, now we got the lender info, whether you're using private money or hard money, you know, this is where you would type that in. And then this is where the amount of days matter. So up here we have 120 um, for a total loan amount of 120,750 bucks, you know, so that's going to start getting broken down. Um, well, here you got the closing costs added in too. So it's a total of 122,590. But let's say you're borrowing money, you know, typically it was just very recently like 12% and two points for hard money um, for, you know, um, new people. Um, and that's who kind of I want to cater to. But right now, you know, if you're somebody new jumping in, it's probably going to cost you 15% interest and roughly two points, you know, to borrow money, um, which breaks down, you know, if you use it for a year, the interest amount you're going to uh, owe them uh, monthly and then daily. So now, you know, we're using 120 days. So it spits out, you know, the holding costs that it will cost us to borrow that sum of money. And then we have alternative holding costs, which is going to be, you know, your insurance taxes, utilities, mowing. This stuff adds up. Um, you know, when they do the HGTV stuff, they say, I bought it for 100, renovated it for 100, sold it for three, made 100,000. You didn't, you know, and I'll type these exact numbers in and show you what they would have actually made had everything gone right, had they not went over budget, um, you know, on a rehab, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so um, before we get to the bottom, because um, we're getting to the end with uh, closing costs, actually, let me just run through it since we're here. Um, and then you have your selling costs, you know, when you buy a flip. So you buy it, you renovate it, you have closing costs on the front end, um, and then you'll have closing costs on the back end too. So here, you know, typically it's another 2% again for the closing costs. And then, you know, I always encourage you to put, you know, the max, um, which is 6%, three through the broker, three to the uh, real estate agent um, as your commissions. But if you, you know, have an agent, you work with somebody for a long time, you can get that number down but just always work your numbers worst case scenario. You know, so if I would have sold this property at 190,000, then I would have also spent another 15,200 just on selling costs. And then that boils down to a 43, you know, thousand dollar profit. And then what this breaks down to is here, let me zoom in on this. So you guys can see this um, from left to right. Yeah, that's more visible. So what we have is we know the property's ARV, the after repair value is 190,000. We purchased it for 92,000. We spent 28,750 on renovations, our holding costs, which is, you know, the lender fees. If you go up here, um, it breaks that down to you. See total hold cost. And then uh, we have our alternative costs, which is, you know, almost 2,800. And that's like your taxes, insurance, all the prorated additional costs um, and utilities. And then we have our selling costs here of 15,200, which brings us to our profit of 43, you know, $1,744. Um, not bad, but let's just run a couple scenarios and show you how this calculator works. And uh, if you've got some, you know, deals you want to analyze, um, drop some comments down below, you know, give me the numbers. Um, I'd love to, you know, kind of help out and connect. Also follow me on Instagram and uh, Facebook. My Instagram is Adamir Bectic Official all together. A-D-M-I-R B-E-K-T-I-C Official. Um, I'll drop that, you know, somewhere down here. You'll see it on the screen. Same thing with uh, a link to my Facebook. Um, but let's run through one of the projects I actually just um, completed and sold which is here were the exact numbers. I, uh, I bought it for 92,000, um, bought it from a wholesaler. The wholesaler had, had it under contract for 80. So he made 12,000 just assigning me the rights to that contract, right? So <clears throat> I spent less than this. Um, so we'll go to a different tab. Um, and this kind of is gonna walk you through, you know, this rehab calculator that's linked to uh, the analyzer I just showed you. So you can go through here and um, let me make this more visible. Actually, that was good. Um, you know, line item by line item. And obviously this is my market specific. Maybe you're in a different market where things cost more or things cost less. Um, but whatever the case may be, know your market's costs. 
and uh, enter this stuff in. And then also my rehab numbers aren't going to be the same as your rehab numbers, you know, and vice versa. Uh, maybe you can do flooring yourself. Uh, maybe you can, you'll just paint the house yourself. So, you know, know your own numbers. Uh, maybe I buy material at a, you know, bulk because I do multiple projects monthly. Um, maybe I can get things done faster because we always use the same things and contractors know exactly what to do in and out every single time. Um, so, you know, if you would type in numbers here, like for right now, you see I have 25 typed in, um, but the rehab budget was like 28,750. Well, that's because if you scroll all the way to the bottom, you always want to have a contingency in case, you know, let's say you uncover, you're going to do tile surround in the bathroom and then you take the, um, vinyl surround down and you realize oh man i got some rotted wood back here now i gotta spend additional money i didn't account for you know some two by fours and um a shower system obviously well that's where the contingency budget kind of comes in anywhere between 10 and 20 if you're like super confident like hey there's no way i'm gonna blow this budget maybe you can drop it down to 10 if you're really uncertain you better run with 20. i just like to run it at 15 percent um you know for what ifs because they can happen um, and another thing, not to, you know, sidetrack and uh, get off of this, but I, I do want to give you guys value. So if you're getting a lot of value from some of this stuff, you know, hit that like button, subscribe, um, share, drop some comments, you know, let me know what else you like. Um, but, you know, you, no matter how many times you've done this, you, you still want to have contingency plans uh, because things do happen and you want to know your own buy box, you know, so you'll get to the point eventually where you may have messed up on a rehab and overspent because you took on a hundred thousand dollar renovation, right? So for example, what I mean by buy boxes, no exactly like, Hey, I know houses built 1950s and later only require so much work. Even if I had to do the whole thing, um, maybe I realized that anytime I go over a rehab budget over 40,000, I actually end up spending more because more things are needed and more things go raw. So maybe say it, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm not going to cut that out. I'm gonna keep going. Um, but maybe, you know, like, Hey, my rehab budget is capped at 40. Um, if it's a project over 40,000 renovations, I don't want parts of it or increase that contingency. Maybe, you know, Hey, 40,000 and under is basically cosmetic stuff. You know, I know what I'm getting myself into. You know, I know a, a 1500 square foot house and under built in 1950s built by a builder, not by mom and pop um you know maybe my bread and butter so know what you like to buy and that way it's less of a you know decision to make like boom that fits my criteria Sh you know shoot for it or maybe i know these houses better than most um whatever you got a certain niche and uh, you can get in and out you know just having a buy box is is super important but let's get back into the display so um you know what i since I know off the bat, I don't go through here all the time and um, build out a scope necessarily. Um, if you have a team, you know, you definitely teach your team how to use this stuff. Um, so that's what I do. We go through thorough training. But when I'm running the numbers and if I look at photos or I've walked the house, um, I just use this thousand dollar mark right here. I'm sorry, you can't see it um because i know like i'll just round it hey this project needs twenty five thousand worth of work and i know there's a 15 percent contingency um you know so i'll put in 25 knowing that it'll be around 28 29 um something like that but you can go through this you know line item by line item and just enter in one or the square feet depending on what the calculator asks for and it'll spit out a rehab number which then in return you know will pop up here so let's run you know through this um, example really quick with uh, just the I, what I closed on it. I don't know two three days ago This were the exact numbers. So uh, we're backtracking a little bit, but I bought it for 92, right? Um, I spent just under 27 and we have 25 entered in, you know, so that brought us up to 28 So I think if I entered 23 in here, you know with 15% it'll just under 27. So that's fine um, paid or sold it for 190 cash, um, held it for roughly four months. It was, I mean, slightly under. Um, I did not use any um, hard money, private money. I used my own money on this flip um, just because I wanted to give the wholesaler 
um, the most money at that time. So that's something that's advantageous to me. I've been doing this so long, you know, I have a pretty good reserve of uh, capital available. So if I know that there's bidding wars and somebody else wanting to get in a deal, most people are using hard money or some type of private money where it costs them additional money to borrow. Um, so that's why I have a competitive edge. Uh, and then, you know, insurance for this property was like six, seven something. So I just, you know, keep it at 700. The taxes for the house uh, were 2400 annually. I typed that in and I always, you know, the utilities weren't this much because I wasn't spending 200 bucks, you know, on utilities for a house that was vacant. Uh, but what I typically do is I always put in $200 uh, per month for utility costs, you know, in case whatever something happens. Uh, but it just made my numbers better. And then, uh, you know, I, uh, I actually, my commission costs weren't this, you know, high, um, but let's just say they were 6%, you know, three to that uh, broker, three to the uh, agent, and then again, closing costs on the back end. So I paid the closing costs on the front end um, because when you're buying the contract from a wholesaler, wholesalers tell um, those sellers like, hey, you know, this is a cash offer. I'm buying it as is. I'm covering your closing costs. You don't have to worry about none of that. So that's why when you take that contract, you assume, you know, everything of that contract that now you're obligated to perform. So not a problem because, you know, at the end of the day, it made fifty four thousand five hundred and forty one dollars and seventy eight cents. It was more like fifty five three um, or whatever. But this was, you know, a phenomenal deal. And it let me know, like, yo, this is, you know, how much I made. And, you know, that was a good day. Um, let's jump into the next calculator. You know, this one can also teach you, you know, if you were wholesaling, how to wholesale this. But there's a different calculator I like better. So if you want to wholesale properties and be able to quickly analyze, um, let's jump to um, this next calculator. So this is a, a calculator from my buddy Austin Rutherford, um, you know, very simple um you know it's not as sexy looking as the other one but it works you know what you just need to do when you're wholesaling is get in the ballpark you know you don't need to hone in on oh my god how much is the rehab to an exact dollar just get in ballpark and let them side because like i said earlier my rehab budget is not going to be your rehab budget you know what i mean so you you can't think that way um same thing maybe that person you're trying to sell to is going to use their own money and not you know incur additional costs from hard money lenders and vice versa so you just got to get in the ballpark man um so what you would do is you know you would do your comp in to know what the arv is to have to repair value so that will let you know, like, hey, what potentially could this person sell it for if they fixed it up completely? Um, you know, here is you would put expected hold time and days, you know, purchase, rehab and sell. Um, typically for, you know, smaller rehab, 30, 40,000 and under, you can get that done in four months. If it's in a good area, you know, where there is a lot of sales volume and um, you've done it right. So let's say the ARV for this one again was 190, right? We're just going to use that same example as we did last time. And let's say you just wanted to make $10,000 first on an assignment fee. That seems to be like what everybody does, um, which when we get to the bottom, I'm going to show you why that's not, you know, um, the way you should look at it. You should know typically what the end buyer is going to make percent wise because you want to offer people, you know, between 10 and 15 percent because the stock market ain't doing them better. Crypto ain't doing them better. So you want to offer a better return, but you also don't want to shoot yourself in the foot and leave too much meat on the table. Um, estimated repair costs, let's say um, for that one, I spent right under twenty seven hundred. Um, you know, I ran my number at 30, but I knew I was going to be close, but possibly be able to get it under. So here is purchase price, you know, like what are you negotiating with that seller to offer? Um, for instance, this uh, wholesaler had it for 80,000. So we'll just run with 80,000, kind of see how things go. Um, then you would jump down here, go to your county's tax assessor's website and see what the taxes are for that house. If you're gonna be buying like a, uh, a rental, you wanna know what that property sold for last and what it's selling for now. If there's like a massive increase, the taxes aren't going to be what they currently are because once the county records new sale price, you're going to get hit with a higher tax rate. So you want to know what that's going to end up being. But since I was just going to be in it now, you know, it's not a big deal. The taxes for that house at the time were 2400 annually. 
um, what is the insurance yearly. If you don't know, um, I suggest you start contacting local um, insurance agents and just start having them run quotes for you. You know, don't waste their time, you know, be serious about, you know, wanting to do stuff or if you own a couple of rentals or your own house, um, you're gonna know an insurance agent. It doesn't take them that long to just give you a quote. Um, mine, you know, for single family homes as rentals, they're typically right under 700 bucks. They used to be, you know, four something, five, but as inflation and everything goes up, so do um, insurance costs. And then monthly utility costs, as I said, 200 bucks. So we got that stuff out. And, uh, you know, now we go to um, the selling costs and purchase costs. So if you see here, um, closing costs are roughly one to 3%. And I always have it in here to let, you know, my team know that, hey, we're using 2% for this example. You know, we're not running an appraisal uh, because we're just looking to wholesale this deal. And uh, commissions, you know, at 6%. And, um, you know, the closing costs on the back end at another 2%. So here's the wholesaler profit. And I'm going to zoom in on this so you can actually see these numbers better. Um, which means now the potential um, rehabber is going to roughly make 54000 you know, which is what I ended up making, which is a 28, you know, 0.61% return. Um, so not good for that wholesaler because he left a lot of money on the table. Granted, if you're watching, buddy, you know, we didn't know at that time that this property was going to sell for 190. Our expectation was 160 because that was the, you know, comp that was similar to it on the street one behind. But then again, you know, you think about it, it was winter time. People weren't selling their houses. And then as soon as the weather broke, you know, I saw a comp sell for 175,000. It was a it was junk. So I was like, oh, there's no way I'm not going to get 175 and mine is completely renovated. And then the market just getting get better and better and um, got a great deal for it. Um, but I'm saying as a wholesaler, you do not want to do this just based on, oh, I want to make 5,000 per wholesale fee or 10,000. Now you work this backwards. So you see, okay, somebody was going to make 28%. You know, that's kind of ridiculous. So you would want to bump your price up, you know, 20,000. Let's say you want to make that as a wholesale fee. See what that brings us. Man, that's still like a lot of meat on the bone for somebody else. You know, you could have made, you know, let's say you wanted to make $35,000 as a wholesale fee. You know, now you're giving that person 15%. You're going to have people um, who really care about what a wholesaler makes and they're not going to want to see you make 35,000. I don't care. You know, you can make 50,000 as long as I make, you know, my percentage, man, there's no reason to count somebody else's pockets. Um, but let's just jump right back into it. Um, so, you know, had we have known that the ARV at that time was going to be 190,000, you know, he could have gotten 35,000 and I still would have been very happy. Uh, another thing too, like if you don't know how to um, estimate rehab costs, you know, so what I have. Um, with my acquisitions is just this little quick calculator. And this is rule of thumb. That's all this is. Um, you know, if it's an easy cosmetic, we typically say about $15 a square foot. If it's a cosmetic, everything about $35 a square foot, full gut 47. So this house was, you know, based on, I think it was 12, I don't even remember 1200 square feet or something like that. I think it was 1120 actually. Um, you know, so it breaks down the price per square foot, you know, according to the ARV, but it also starts spitting out, you know, how much the rehab cost should have been. So I got under, you know, for 27,000, but it wasn't easy cosmetic, which is easy cosmetic to us. I always say it's just flooring and paint. That's it. Anything more than that, you know, we throw into the cosmetic everything section. Um, but obviously it wasn't a full cosmetic, even if I did run my numbers at 40,000 and I bought it for 92 at that time, it would have worked, but it's, it's a ballpark guys. You're just trying to wholesale. Um, most wholesalers, you know, aren't flipping, aren't doing X, Y, and Z. So, um, you just need to get close enough. You don't know if somebody's using private money, hard money. You don't know if they're going to spend so much on the rehab. So you see, if you would have just gotten close and even offered that person, let's say 90,000 right in 80, he still would have made money. Um, so that's just uh, the wholesale calculator. Um, the next calculators that I do have are just uh, some other repair calculators that um, go, you know, line item by line item. Um, another repair estimator. This is, you know, more in depth 
Um, there's way more things in here. Um, you know, this is one that I use for training um, to just let people know, you know, more about training and different little tricks here and there, like reglazing the tub. You know, how much does that cost and um, little things like that. And then uh, this is a rent analyzer um, for you to be able to know, you know, can you cash out refinance perfectly? Um, the first one that I used actually is a, a little bit better. So let me let me jump to it. Um, and uh, run these numbers through real quick. So that house that I flipped, right, and made $54,000 on. I went back and forth with this house, I don't know, over a dozen times. Am I gonna sell it? Am I gonna keep it as a rental? Um, it, you know, it bothered the hell out of me because I'm a rental guy. But here, here were the numbers, right? As a flip, I bought it for 92, put, you know, just under 27,000 into it. Um, the ARV, the sale price was 190. Um, you know, long story short, if I wanted to refinance this house and keep it as a rental, this is how you find out if this property would have cash flow. Um, so let's say, you know, I was going to take out 70% on a refinance. So how this works is a bank is not going to give you the whole, you know, amount for what the house is worth. Why? Because what if the market tanks now they're underwater, they need you to have skin in the game. So they'll give you about 70% with you leaving about 30% of equity into it. Um, and then one time closing fee I've seen on refinances, it's a bit higher. So I keep it at 3% and, uh, interest rate, let's say 7.5. Cause you know, they're high at a 30 year fix. So that lets me know what, uh, my, um, principal interest taxes and insurance are, but I have to go down and, um, also add that stuff in, which, um, is down. Oh, it, uh, it's already calculated. I'm sorry, because it's above here. It just takes it from uh, your taxes and insurance up here. So my PITI would have been 11.88 and 29 cents. Um, and then we keep going down to the income. This was a four bedroom house. I could have rented for 1600. Originally I listed it at 15. And I mean, the responses were overwhelming. Usually, you know, when you throw out a rental people dash, oh man, you're charging so much, da, 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 da. This was a prime location. You're offering four bedrooms right, you know, near downtown walking distance to all the eateries, fine dining and whatnot. Uh, so I was like, should I undershot myself? But I would have. I would have kept it at 1500 just because I got it for such a good deal. I would have refinanced out pretty well. Um, so this is what it would look like to me. I would have cash flowed before my expenses, you know, $311. Um, my all in for the property was 126, right? I bought it for 92, put about, you know, 27 into it, closing costs here and there. I was all in 126,000, but um, refinancing, you know, the end value was 190, right? A bank sends an appraiser out. The appraiser says, hey, the property's worth 190. We'll give you 70%. 70% of that 190 is $133,000. Oh, that's crazy, right on the money. Um, so I would have now put a loan on the property because originally I paid all cash for it. There was no debt. So now there's debt on the property that the tenant is paying down, right? My mortgage is 1188. If I'm renting it for 1500, you know, that's where that 311 is before expenses. And here, what the calculator spits out is if it goes in green, that means you're getting money back out. So I would have made another almost $7,000 tax free, um, in my pocket. Um, and the way that works is because it's not like it was earned income. It's in the form of debt, right? I put $133,000 of debt on it, but I was able to recoup my 126 first with a leftover chunk of 7,000. So I also got paid. I own a property that's completely renovated. Um, you know, my cap X is low, which is capital expenditures, you know, new windows, new roof, hot water tank, all these things where you hear maintenance costs from, I just decreased, uh, which brings me to the next point. Um, so I, I'm into this property for zero dollars at all. My principal and interest was, you know, 1180. Let's say I still keep my maintenance numbers high at 5% and I'm putting aside $75 a month from that 1500. And then I go to my CapEx. Let's say I keep that high too, you know, at another 5%, put another $75 away from um, that 1500. And then uh, management, you know, depends if you have management or not. Typically it's eight to 10%. I self-manage, um, you know, I have my brother-in-law, he's, uh, he's awesome. Um, my sister helps in the business. I, you know, we kind of got the whole family involved and then your vacancy rate. So what your vacancy rate is, um, let's say somebody was to move out and it took you 
for some reason a whole month to rent this property out well guess who has to pay the mortgage then right you do but if you put aside also money from you know the current tenant that's in there let's say another 75 dollars a month and then you know after a year they move out at least you build up some income that if you cannot for some reason rent it out for a whole month um that previous tenant pay for that mortgage until you get it situated again so you know it doesn't look sexy once you take the gross rent minus expenses equals cash flow wow you know after all these expenses you know you're grossing 300 and something dollars a month but after you start putting some money aside too for what ifs you're only making 86 dollars a month but remember i have a ton of equity left in this house it's built in equity it's not bought in equity you know so i guess the question is would you keep a house where you're only technically cash flow on hundred dollars a month keep in mind it's completely renovated it's in an area that's going to continuously appreciate um and then i personally i don't need the seven thousand dollars to pull out maybe i didn't need to refinance at you know 70 percent. maybe i could have refinanced at 65 and kept more money in you know instead of making seven thousand dollars i could have left you know 2300 in to buy a house in the great area for 2300 dollars completely fixed up you know, then my net cash flow goes up to about $153 a month. That's much better. You know, this is probably what I would have done. Hell, I probably would have left refinanced at 60%. I don't even know if that's possible. I've never actually I have, but you know, now times are different. But this is, you know, this would have worked out perfect. So that would have been a gross of almost $400 a month. So that's kind of what I look for. This was a perfect rental. You know, there's people nowadays saying, oh, you can't do perfect birds. You still can. You just have to know how to find them off market and buy them at a discount. Um, is it harder? Yeah, because the interest rates are, you know, harder. But, you know, the timing also um, was perfect here. You know, we bought this in the wintertime where we thought, you know, the price was one thing. Um, it ended up being something better and it just worked out. But that's why, you know, it boggles my mind when people want to time the market. It's not time in the market. It's time in the market. If you do this on a consistent basis, you run into deals like this sometimes. This is not an everyday type of deal. You know, this looks good. It's just happened to be, you know, the last two, three days um, selling this one. So this calculator also helps you realize like, hey, if I fix a property up, you know, can I burr, buy, renovate, rent, refinance and repeat out of this property? You know, how much would I make or how much would I keep into it? And does it make sense? Um, and jump into another couple, couple calculators. Um, which is, you know, let's say you're a person that is, you don't care about all this stuff. It just takes too much time. You have a great job, you have a great income, um, and you just want to leverage your W-2 because you have a great salary and you look good to a bank to just put money down and buy rentals, right? This calculator is for you. Um, and it's so, so simple. Um, let's see, can you see it all? Yeah, okay, cool. Let me just make this a little bit bigger here. So let's say you're looking at a property and it's, I don't know, $200,000, right? Maybe it's a duplex here in Ohio. It's, you know, somewhat nicely done up. And uh, I don't know if lenders are charging you a percent or not. Um, you know, I last, I think all market rent when I bought, it was 0 0.75, but let's just say you pay one point. It could be higher, so know your own stuff. Um, it automatically, you know, spits out your closing costs. Um, which I have 3% um, for this. You can, you know, higher, lower that um, to your liking. But when I do these all market ones, I keep it at three. Uh, and then now you go to your financing box. So before I jump ahead, all it is is the, the purchase box, the financing box, um, the income box, the expense box, and then it spits out your metrics, right? So we bought it for 200, you know, maybe we pay some points, um, closing costs, down payment, um, typically you're putting down 20%, so I'm going to change that. Uh, you know, so you're having to put 40,000 down. Wow. That sounds like a lot of money to invest, to only make, you know, a certain amount of cash flow, which we'll get to. But if you've got the money and, you know, if you just buy one rental a year or two a year this way, you know, maybe you and your significant other or partners or family get together and start buying rentals together. Let's say it's for you guys and you all always are putting 10,000 down. I mean, you can buy multiple that year and start building and creating wealth. Um, so your finance amount, you know, after putting 40 down, you know, is 160 interest rate, let's say a 7.5 as an investment, you're getting a 30 year mortgage. So your monthly payment on this property would be, you know, 1100 
for a total of you know thirteen thousand four hundred twenty four annually that's just your principal and interest you know now we come down to the uh income box and here it gives you your cash outlay which it tells you hey you're gonna need roughly forty eight thousand dollars to close on this two hundred thousand dollar duplex um but let's say each side you know you're renting for 800 bucks a month um so that's 1600 dollars uh income again we go back to the vacancy you're putting away five percent which is uh eighty dollars a month out of that 1600 um and then now we go to you know the expenses well what expenses do you have let me zoom in on this um you've got your property taxes annually so let's say it was 2400 um typically in this area that's what it would cost a duplex depending on area if you're in a much nicer area i mean like extremely nice where it wouldn't cash flow at all it'd be higher if you're in a super shitty area and um you don't want the you i guess you know you're rent to a different demographic or whatever you may have problems may have lower rents um it would be lower but the average average around you know this area in ohio is about 24 annually for a duplex um your insurance costs typically for a single family i always run the numbers at you know 700 annually um let's just say you're paying like 1200 a year um for a duplex which you know if you don't have a good relationship with an insurance agent they're probably going to charge you this maybe more and tear your mouth out i mean i pay like 1500 for an eight unit but this would be a safe number just to run numbers at um and then we've got your um you know repairs and uh capex and maintenance um typically you know you like to keep that at 10 percent if it's a real shitty property and you know you're going to be needing to fix things up and you don't do it on the front end um higher the number if you know you've gone through the process and kind of fixed it up and got an efficiency toilet in there you know you've got a newer roof hot water tank x y and z you can drop it down to i don't know five six but just to run your numbers on the front end just keep it at 10 and that puts another 152 dollars out of you know your rental income of 1600 so long story short now we get to you know your cash flow metrics um you're grossing 181 dollars you know after taking money away from that 1600 you know you got your principal and interest and then you got your taxes uh insurance and uh, maintenance costs so that brings you to you know negative 51 dollars a month not good you know well what if this property was renting for a thousand dollars a side you know for a two bedroom one bathroom duplex on each side that's you know kind of where you would be at um in this area so now you're cash flowing 291 um and that's after your expenses but your gross is i'm sorry you guys couldn't see this go to the metric box so now you're grossing 581 which you know if you watch bigger pockets brandon turner his numbers are you know if you're buying a multi-family you want to make a hundred dollars per door well this is you know definitely exceeding that you're making you know well just a little bit over you know hundred dollars to door after expenses but it also tells you you know your cash on cash return um and it also tells you you know where you're at on the one percent rule you're right under it actually you know you're at 0 0.91 and i have another video about the one percent rule so just check that out but quickly to kind of let you know what that is is if you buy a property for a hundred thousand dollars in order for you to right off the bat quickly analyze no hey is this property even going to cash flow or make sense for me to dive in deeper you need to know if i buy it for a hundred thousand the minimum it needs to be able to rent for is a thousand dollars a month um, that meets the 1% rule. If I buy a property for $200,000, the minimum it needs to rent for is 2000 Hence why I use the 2000 You know, that's the minimum. But what if this is an area you can, you know, get 1100 each or whatever and bring this to 22 You know, that only increases your cash flow and you perform better. Yes, you put $48,000 down. You know, it doesn't seem sexy. You're only making you know 11.56 percent cash on cash but i mean what is your bank paying you yeah you have different you know banks now offering four or five percent it's still not beating inflation inflation seven eight percent i mean you're getting your your i mean your money's burning so this is if you want to be a w2 investor um this calculator is great for that you can quickly use it to even do multi-units just know you know your total numbers how many units 
how much you know potential rent what is the purchase price down payment you know rate you can use it for that i mean i've got other more elaborate calculators for things like that but um just quickly let's keep it pushing i know this video is a bit longer um, than i hope so if you're getting value out of this please 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 share this subscribe let me know what you like let me know what you didn't like i'm just going off the top of my head maybe i missed something that i was talking about earlier and got sidetracked but drop some comments down below like comment um share subscribe these take you know a long time that's why i haven't been putting out as many as i wanted to um because i am an expecting father you know got my own family life got businesses i run and uh, i just try to do this for you guys so if you guys you know help me um, grow, I'll definitely be able to invest more time. And uh, that's, you know, my passion is helping others. Uh, but this calculator right here is just a quick um, comparable analysis calculator. So I'm just going to give you a quick overview this way. Um, I know it's kind of hard to see. Actually, let's go do this and um, should be able to see it somewhat better. And then full. Yep, there we go. So what this does is, let's say you know you just want to comp, um, you would just type in the first address, second address, third address, you know, get the average of three, how many beds, how many square feet, you know, a um, couple other things I like to know right off the bat, does it have a garage, does it pay, AC, date sold, sold price, um, you know, year built. So you start putting in these comps and what this calculator is going to spit out is the dollar value per square foot of those comps. But then um, furthermore, I actually don't use this to, to make offers, but you know, there's quick little rules in here. But what this calculator basically does, it just, it spits out, um, you know, three of, you know, relatively similar properties. It calculates the sold prices and it gives you an average sale price. Then it, you know, compares that to the square feet. How many dollars per square foot is these type of houses selling for and then what you do is you take that number and you multiply that by the square foot of your house and you would know roughly like hey this is the value per square foot according to you know three similar comps um, so you know it's just a quick little um, comp calculator then another calculator I have in here is um, just a quick amortization you know um, calculator so like for that last one for example you know we took a loan amount of 160,000 now you know, 30 years interest rate was 7.5 and you're making 12 payments per year. Remember that number um, that we had that was, you know, like 11, 18 or whatever. Here it is. And it just gives you a payment schedule of, you know, every single month, every single payment until you get down to zero. And it also lets you know how much interest um, over time and what you actually paid for the house. And then uh, I got a different little calculator here. Um, it's also an amortization schedule, but what this helps is like when I'm doing sometimes creative finance deals where, hey, I'm gonna offer this guy, you know, 200, maybe he's asking for like 150 for the house, but I say, hey, I'll actually give you more in principle, give you 200,000. You know, we'll start the payments on July 1st and uh i'm always going to negotiate for zero percent interest right and try to amortize it on 30 years um and then here you can type in a number that you're willing to pay the person maybe you want to pay them 500 bucks a month and the calculator is going to spit out what that's actually going to look like because you know you can only rent it for a thousand and you want to make about 500 bucks cash flow a month but this way this person's getting more than what they're asking for they're going to get uh, money without having to deal with tenants and toilets. And that appeals to some people. Maybe you can give them some type of smaller down payment uh, and it will let you know, you know, your payment schedule down here and how that would work. I'd rather, you know, when it comes to these type of deals, um, you can pay somebody way more in principle because let's say for this house, you know, I pay them 200,000, but the other one I paid, you know, 164. So let's see what the difference is here. I'm only going to end up paying them 200,000 total. Yes, he was asking for 150, um, but I gave him 50,000 more, but I only came out of pocket that $200,000 over 30 years. You know, that other example, um, you know, let's say I gave him, you know, bought it for 150, whatever he was asking for. I'm even paying him less, right? 30 years at seven and a half percent. I mean, you're going to end up paying, let's get down to 360 months. You know, I mean, look, we're past 300,000. Here we go. Here's that number. We're paying this person $377,000, um, you know, and some change over 30 years because of the interest. So you can offer sellers more 
in principle and if they say something like oh you know i also want to make some money on my money you know i'm not going to do that zero percent i mean that's great but keep in mind interest is taxed differently so you just got to kind of go back and forth and see what they really want explain to them the benefits um whatnot but that's kind of what that calculator helps with you know if that's something that you ever come across i have that ready and then uh just quickly here's a part of a calculator that i have in like a super large multifamily calculator where it can tell me you know syndication costs um you know all types of different sources of acquis uh, acquiring a multi um, a large multifamily property but let's say you know the gross potential annual income for a property which you know here is where we're getting to um you know knowing what cap rate is and no lie so let's say the gross potential rent this is the full amount of the rent right let's say it was 800 dollars a month for 20 units you know whatever that gross is um we always take away like a, a 10 percent physical vacancy and ec economic um takeaway which gives us like a net annual income and then how you know commercial real estate works is it's income driven you got your single family residences that are valued by their comps you know the house that looks similar to the left to the right within a half mile maybe within a mile but house values are only you know driven by what the similar type of house sold for and what type of condition multifamily a little different it's um income driven if you're able to decrease the expenses um, and that's all you did and you kept the rents the same well you just increased the income because your expenses are lower um, you know so we evaluate that based on um, a cap rate and you know you also need to know like a commercial broker and ask them like hey what's the you know going cap rate in my market um, you know for an acquisition where, where should I sell at the higher that this number is you know let me go back to the calculator the higher that this um, cap rate is, the riskier that investment is going to be. Like if it's a 15% cap rate, you're going to, you know, have a lot of potential. You're probably going to have a, a, a lot of cash flow because you're buying it so cheap. But what it also tells me is maybe this is a riskier investment because maybe it's, uh, you know, I'm paying $10,000 a unit somewhere in, let's say, Detroit. Don't mean to bash on Detroit. Um, but you're able to rent it for, you know, $700 a month, $800 a month for a $10,000 investment. You're going to recoup your money fast. Um, the lower this number is, that means the higher the purchase price is going to be. And maybe it's a completely stabilized asset. So you're going to pay the premium. Um, and then the annual expenses, you know, the rule of thumb is, you know, you spend about 50% on your operating expenses, which is everything except your and costs you know that's gonna be your interest principal taxes insurance um, repairs maintenance um, you know employees everything besides the finance and income because we can't evaluate um, this based on financing the reason is maybe you have a higher credit score or i have a higher credit score i get a better term uh, maybe you put more money down which lowers the loan or i put more money down and lowers my loan so it makes you know that number significantly different so we we base it on as you buying it all cash you know so if a property produced one hundred and fifty thousand dollars in uh, gross income um and the net operating income was 67500 and you wanted to buy it at a 10% cap rate, you know, quickly we know, hey, you know, maybe we can offer around 675 and then go through a due diligence process and really check it out and really go through the financials um, and walk the property and see how many AC units does it need repaired? You know, do we need to um, pay more for it? If we have to pay more for it, you know, because of the repairs, well we can't offer them this then you know your all-in number purchase plus repairs needs to be factored into this number so um hopefully that helped out and uh, if you need this calculator go ahead and drop some comments down below and uh, i'd be happy to share this stuff with you